Was it me? Sorry. It's how I it. yeah, Sorry, yeah, I was just... Frank, fantastic comeback. And obviously, you're going to be very disappointed with being in that situation in the first place. We've heard on TV you've blamed some of the players for those individual errors. What do you have to sort of do as, as manager to sort of question your own uh, part in the role of that match, your own role in the game? Um, I, didn't, I, I, I didn't blame the players. I stated the facts on, on clear mistakes that led to their goals which in a game like this in the Premier League is always going to be difficult. It's not a tactical moment. It's a turnover in possession, which we spoke about before, and the idea that the West Brom would approach the game waiting for transitions. But when moments like that happen on the pitch, you can get um, punished. And we were punished, which gave us a three-goal mountain to climb, which the lads did show great character to, to overcome. But at the same time, it's not a position you want to be in when you come to somewhere that the team are organised, want to make it difficult, and you give them three goals like we gave them. I understand. So what's your overall emotion then after the match? No mixed emotions. Of, um, I'm, I'm happy to see a team fight to the last minutes to get the goal back, the goals back. Um, but I have to go back to the beginning and, and not be happy to, with the fact that we conceded those three. Three shots on target and we concede three goals. Dan King, please. Sam. Hi, Frank. Um, inevitably, there's going to be focus on um, Thiago Silva on his uh, debut. What did, you, what did you make of that and what... What, what will he learn from today? Ah, listen, Thiago Silva is, is going to be fantastic for us. He's been incredible in his career. And absolutely, the, will not, I will not look at him. I, I can talk about the mistakes. They're clear. And we have to be honest and open about that. But I will not put any blame on him. We're a team that have to react around that. And, and to be fair, the team did in the second half. But no, it's nothing on, on Thiago. I'm sure he'll stand up and, and uh, say it was a mistake. Other than that, I think he was pretty faultless in the game. Um, and that's his first Premier League game done and in, and in the bank. So we'll get a lot more from him as well, especially as, as, as he gets fitter and as the whole squad gets fitter. Have you got any more questions? Thank please you. raise your hand. We'll get to the end of the Mondays, which is like the 5 over 22, 30, something like Any more questions to reduce today's game? Alan Smith? Hi, Frank. Just on a positive note, can I ask you about Callum's performance? Obviously, he seemed to be a bit of a game changer when he came off the bench in the second half. Yeah, yeah. Callum gave me everything, gave us everything that, that I wanted from him in the second half in terms of the ability to go 1v1, um, try and take people on, gets his goal, uh, giving us something different. And that's what Callum needs to do. That's the impact he can have for us. Uh, and it has to be consistent. And he, he gave himself a great platform now to, to continue in that vein because it will be very important for us if he does. Jonathan Northrop. I'll meet yourself, Jonathan. Jonathan, are you there? Any others for today's game? Jonathan? Sorry, 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 Frank. Hi, can you hear me now? Yeah. Hi. Hi. Um, yeah, Frank, do you think the, the defensive mistakes were a product of, of, you know, a team that's still trying to settle down in terms of selection and, and, and blending the right players and that they will be eradicated as part of that process? Well, I think it's hard to absolutely pinpoint that. They, they, they are what they are today. Yeah, I think there's a there's an element with the team and not just talking about the goals we conceded, but where it's going to be a settle down process because we haven't had much time to work. We haven't had a pre-season to, to bed in new players and new ideas or what will be new ideas for them to keep moving forward. So, yeah, that takes a bit of time. I'm not sure it's directly related to um, the mistakes for the goals today. The mistake at the set piece, for example, is something that's clear. I don't think it's whether you're new to the club or old to the club. If you're a designated man, you have to follow them. You have to make it very difficult for them to score. That's, that's not a new thing. So there are parts of it that are just fundamentals. OK, last one in this section. Andy Dillon. Hi, Frank. Can you hear me? Got you, Andy. Hi, Frank. Um, I just want to talk about the, the three of the players who came on at half-time. You had Azpilicueta. Uh, oh, sorry, not came on at half-time, but three crucial players of the game today, Azpilicueta, Callum and, and Tammy. All players with a point to prove. Um, you know, there was a lot of pressure put on Tammy. Everybody thought he wouldn't get a start. Callum's struggling to get into the team. Azpilicueta is struggling to get into the team. In a way, does this prove you right, that you need to keep players sharp and hungry because they've come on they've probably got a bit of a grudge 
against you for not starting and they've come on and they've kind of proved a point to you maybe? Um, well, yeah, I mean, in a competitive squad with people who want to play, it always you always want that to be honed in a positive fashion. I never had a doubt with Aspie, for instance, because of the great professional and captain that he is for this club and has been. So I expect that. But it's great to see um, the reaction of, of Callum coming on and playing the way he did and making a difference. And Tammy, the younger players, particularly when players come into the club, have been asked a lot already this season about how they will react, where will their place be in the squad. It's there for them. It's there for them to take it with both hands. Um, a difficult game for Tammy today where he has to keep working and fighting all the time to try and break down a back five that wants to sit there and he gets his reward at the end. So there were there were positives in the fact of those three you mentioned and how they <coughs> reacted and how they played. <coughs> Oh, can, can I just ask one quick one more? Just one. Go on, Ed, go on. Yeah, so, yeah, it was just, I, I caught you on the TV, Frank, talking about, you know, mistakes and, and whatever. And it took me back to the Sheffield United game. I know you came back to get a point from this one, but it still seems like you're saying, it's, you're giving the same speech about the mistakes and that sort of thing. And you've spent a lot of money and the pressure's up, but you, you still seem to be saying the same things to them. Like, you said you learnt a lot of things that day, but... Maybe your your team still haven't got that message. Yeah, that, and that's that's why we have to keep working because you have to understand, be humble enough to accept the mistakes if they're clear ones or if they're focused ones or concentration ones, and the players have to get better. We're increasing the competition in the squad. We've done that. <coughs> There'll always be a pretty clinical view in football that if you're going to make mistakes, you have opportunities to pay, put them right. You have to work hard to put them right, and if you don't then your opportunities are going to be less. And that's a, a, the ruthless nature of football. And yes, we want to improve this year from where we were last year, but there's a lot of work to be done. So I'll, I'll keep repeating the message, not just to yourselves, but I'll repeat that behind closed doors because that's what it takes, repetition, to make sure we improve. OK, in the end of 